So really, um, this, this kind of presentation covers like sort of my five main passions in life. Um, I did a business studies degree, um, and I learned a little bit about culture there, like the academic side of things. Um, I'm head of, promotion, uh, head of radio promotions at Columbia Records in the UK. Uh, that's where the radio thing is. Um, we work in the music industry. I love music. Um, I also run a startup called Buzz Jam, which I'll explain a little bit more about uh, later. And uh, I founded an organization called Young Guns Network about three years ago or so, uh, which is a network for uh, 18 to 30s in the media industry, mainly based in London. Um, so, oh yeah, and we're also going to talk about a little bit about basketball as well. So, obviously we've been going through a lot of change in the music industry right now. Um, I think one of the key things that's happening right now with music streaming is it's sort of consumption and discovery are now kind of the same thing with music streaming. Um, previously, the process has been quite linear, so, you know, and this is a massive generalization, of course, um, but, you know, we get records on the radio, we try and get them on TV, we try and get people to write nice things about them in the press, and, you know, we put some posters up, and hopefully the consumer would go out and buy the music. Um, it was quite a linear process, and obviously streaming has kind of changed that uh, a great deal. Um, and the way... It, the way I like to look at it a little bit is, this is another academic look at kind of what um, the customer experience journey is. Um, and this is the customer experience journey as sort of in a business studies kind of way. Um, and I think what's different about this is, so in music industry, we perhaps spent like five, six to eight weeks or so generating discovery. And then we put the record out and we hoped that someone along would come and buy it. And that was the purchase, that was the consumption. But now, effectively, every part of this customer experience journey is an opportunity to drive a play on a streaming service. So the way I see it is everyone who's involved in all of these parts is now responsible for that product. And maybe the product of a record label should now be seen more as an experience between the fan and the artist more than just we're selling music, you know? Um, and that's quite, a, that's quite a different thing. And I think, you know, record labels, certainly our record label, you know, that's something that we're, you know, it presents a challenge in the way we do things, the way we structure our label, all of the ways we think about what we're doing all the time. Um, and I think in order to do that effectively, um, we need to, you know, the word innovation came up a lot yesterday, but that is a buzzword, but it's a buzzword for a reason. Um, really important to mention artists, obviously. Um, artists are like at the heart of what we do at record labels. You know, everything, despite all the new technology that comes through, they are front and center. You know, they are the beating heart of everything we do. But I like to try and see what we do at record labels more as um, perhaps agents for our artists' creativity rather than people and a label and a company that just sell their music. Um, and yeah, I think that's, that's a key point. And I think um, using a culture of innovation is how we sort of adapt to this new process and how we see things a little bit differently. Okay, yeah, so culture of innovation. We've got to move really, really quickly to adjust to these new changes and think about things a little differently. Um, and I think culture of innovation is key and doing it really quickly and being able to uh, adjust to all these changes in the market are what really, which, uh, which is really key. So I want to talk a little bit about this guy. His name's Eric Ries. I mean, some of you may know about him. He's, um, he's an author. Uh, he's actually, he's basically the Drake of contemporary startup thinking. He doesn't look like Drake, but in that world, he's the top guy. And anyway, he wrote this book called The Lean Startup. Um, and this is his definition of what a startup is. And I quite like this, uh, this definition because it's not necessarily, he doesn't see it necessarily as a company per se, but just a group of people um, you know, that are searching for a business model under conditions of extreme uncertainty. And the way he kind of views that um, process is quite simple. Um, he says it's like a build, measure, learn sort of situation. And I think now we have a lot of data at our fingertips at record labels. We can measure a lot more. We can do a lot more measurement. Um, and his, I, I guess his basic idea with build, measure, learn is to do this as quickly as possible. So turn ideas into products, uh, put them out, get them out there, measure the customer response really quickly, learn from it, and then build something and do that as quickly as we can. And he, he basically wants to do that and work out whether to pivot or persevere based on that reaction. And now we have, I mean, I like to call it the dashboard era because 
we now have access to all this information. Certainly at Sony, we have a dashboard now which a lot of information comes from a lot of our streaming services. And I think it's really important that everyone in the record label now has access to that information. It's not something that should be held just in the insight department or the data department. You know, we should all be looking at these things, measuring, you know, measuring consumer reaction, coming up with ideas. And when I mean products and turning ideas into products, I don't just mean like products to put in record labels like music, like a CD or anything, but I'm talking about strategies. I'm talking about content ideas. I'm talking about, you know, anything that is part of the customer experience journey, because that's what our product is nowadays. Um, and yeah, we talked a little bit about the dashboard era. I, I kind of see this as, as really important because if you look at all the uh, gatekeepers, of, like often at streaming services, they're looking at dashboards. Um, we need a way of being able to process all this big data that we're getting all the time and having that dashboard and being able to make sense of it and turn it into real tangible things and actionable insights that we can make the process between the artist and the fan much better and that connection closer, then we all should have access to this. And it's something that we're all trying to learn how to do at the moment. And um, you know, there's lots of companies coming along that are providing solutions for that, even if you're not at a major record label. But I think this is a really key part. And often people talk about the two cultures that are emerging, perhaps. I don't know where everyone stands on this, but it feels like, obviously, there's an old school way of looking at it. You know, music's about gut feel. It's about just feel. You know, it's about, you know, it's uh, uh, about creativity and all these intangible things. And then there's data, which is more, you know, numbers. It's facts, it's science, you know, and can these two cultures really coexist? And I think they really can. And um, I, think, uh, I think Netflix is a really good example of that. I think BuzzFeed's a really good example of that. But the example that I really like the most, which, which comes into culture as well, is actually, um, they're called the Golden State Warriors and they're, a, they're an NBA team. And I want to talk about this guy, his name's Joe Lacob. He is a, a Silicon Valley entrepreneur. Um, he actually made all his money through uh, Auto Trader, the magazine. He didn't know anything about basketball, right? He now runs um, the Golden State Warriors, and he bought them for about $450 million in about 2010. He didn't know anything about basketball, right? Not really. I mean, he was a basketball fan, but he didn't know anything about running it. But he took a lot of the hallmarks of Silicon Valley startup culture, openness, collaboration, measurement, all of those things, and applied it to basketball. And if you think about basketball, you need, crea you need creativity, there's a lot of luck involved, it takes a lot of experience, you know. They're all sort of things you could view as the music industry. But he took a sort of statistical approach to the idea of running a basketball company and he took a lot of these startup um, uh, ways of working. And the, um, the basketball company, the Golden State Warriors now is worth something like $4.5 billion. It's, it, it's enormous compared to what it was. And a lot of that is down to the way he runs it. And if you think about, um, he took a very unorthodox approach to running a basketball company. Usually, um, basketball uh, um, companies and teams were run by like a tyrannical boss that had a lot of money who bought it as a sort of vanity project. But he came along and he used a statistical approach. Um, and he basically got in front of his dashboard and he looked at the entire player behavior of the whole of the NBA. And he came up with a kind of new way of playing basketball. Not a new way, but a kind of new strategy from the stats. And it's this. So this is Steph Curry. Um, Steph Curry is like their um, key, their best player of the team. And what you'll see here is, I mean, the video's a little bit slower, but um, I'll, I'll go through it again. See that little line there? He crosses that line. He then runs back outside that line to take the shot, and that, that is because that line is the three-point marker. Any shot taken in front of that line is worth one point. Every shot taken outside of that is worth three. And what he realized across all NBA players was that they could be taking a lot more of these three-pointer shots, and it was a market inefficiency. So he understood that from the data, and what he got all his players to build their entire team around this idea of taking three-point shots as their main shot, and it increased the scoring by 41% from that. Um, and now, actually, the whole NBA are playing this style of basketball. It's quite incredible. They've, they're now all playing a sort of three-point game. Um, and you know, it's quite remarkable that, that those two things came together, and that kind of came out of a stat, which I think is really interesting. Um, but what's really important about this, I love this quote as well, because he, uh, he was a listener. He created an atmosphere and a culture at the record label where 
anyone could be an entrepreneur. Everyone had access to that information. An idea could come from anywhere in that process, and that was really important. Um, you know, he, he made the data available to the whole team. He allowed everyone to, to kind of use that data to come up with ideas. And he was a bit of a connector. He, he would listen. He had his door open all the time. He wasn't that tyrannical boss that just called all the shots. You know, sometimes we were all sitting in meetings sometimes where the highest paid person in the room is the one that's got all the ideas. And we just sit there going, okay, yeah. But actually, in a time when we need to innovate, in a time when we need to change, I, good ideas can come from anywhere, and that's the thing that he really re recognized and made sure his team was possible. Um, and that's when it comes to Nick, Nick Uren. Nick Uren was a junior coach as part of this team. He was the guy that got the coach to meetings on time. He was the guy that you know, sorted out the playlist for the team during training. He was really, really low down in the pecking order. Um, but what he created a culture where Nick actually came up with an idea, um, and it was during the, I think it was the 2015 NBA Finals. And um, he, he was viewing the data again, he was looking at video footage, he was looking at stats, he was doing all that sort of thing. And he came up with this idea for a, a sort of new, uh, a new lineup change um, for the team, a new way of playing the game in that uh, particular game. And this was the finals of the NBA and he texted, he texted his coach and he came up with this idea and the coach was like, oh, that's actually not a bad idea, we'll, we'll try that out. The fact that he even you know, created a culture where the guy at the bottom could come up with an idea and then tell the top guy, the coach, about this idea, tells a lot about this culture and about the culture he created. And what's incredible about it is that actually made them win the NBA Finals. That he actually, that they, they attribute that one little strategy change to winning the NBA Finals in 2015. And I think they came second last year. Um, and it's quite incredible because you know, we go back to the build, measure, learn idea and the, the idea that we need to turn ideas into products. This is what happened here. He came up with an idea. They turned it into product, which was a strategy. They delivered that strategy. They delivered that product in the game and they won. And that's why they're such a profitable company. And what's even better is that they gave them the credit as well. They actually, instead of just taking on and just, you know, going, oh, we're incredible. Uh, you know, our team is amazing. They actually said, you know what? No, it was down to it was down to Nick Uren. He came up with this idea, and I think that's really great. I mean, this guy, no one knew, and suddenly the whole of the American media is chasing after him, saying, uh, you know, and putting that guy. And I think that's really important these days that we give, you know, young people a chance and, and more junior members of record labels and companies a chance to have their ideas heard because anyone can have a good idea and turn it into a product. Um, and just to, to quickly finish off, we're doing this, um, we're trying this at Sony Music at the moment. Um, I'm very fortunate to work, I think, for Sony Music because we're trying to create a bit more of a culture of innovation. Um, we have various things, as I mentioned before, we all have access to this dashboard now. We can all see this information. Anyone can get a login, which is, which is really interesting and I think is the way forward. But also we have this thing called the Spark Fund as well, where if you come up with a good idea, you can actually get funding for it as well. Um, and I talked about the startup that I run before. Um, I actually, um, I came up with an idea. It was an idea to bring uh, computer coders and artists together. Um, and they were to create brand new musical instruments for one unique performance at the end, bringing the worlds of sort of computer coding and musicianship and artists together to create brand new musical instruments. This one is a double-headed guitar made out of guitar hero heads and two Game Boys. Um, but it created a lot of press for our artists. Um, Sony Music gave me the money and, and uh, funded part of it. Um, created a lot of press. We did our, our most recent event in 2016. It trended at two on Twitter behind the X Factor. Um, and you know, this is, it, it just, I have a lot of admiration for my company that I can come up with an idea and they can actually allow me to go and do it. And I think that's really important these days and um, uh, to have, I guess, another reason to come into work. You know, you, we all have our jobs, we all do our day-to-day -day jobs, we all do them, but imagine you come into a, an office where you know if you come up with that one idea, it's gonna get listened to, it can be turned into a product, and, you know, um, be, I mean, essentially really help the company's bottom line um, and be innovative. Um, and that's it, I think, yeah, thank you.